welcome to another mini lesson. This time we're talking about the female reproductive system. This also covers some of the male reproductive system and sexually transmitted diseases. You may see the abbreviation STD or the more updated abbreviation STI for sexually transmitted infections. So let's start with chlamydia. Chlamydia is known as the silent disease because you can be infected and not show any symptoms. This is obviously problematic because you can spread the disease from person to person and not even be aware of it. When there are signs, it's usually a vaginal or penile discharge with dysuria. And remember, dysuria means pain with urination. Gonorrhea is similar to chlamydia in that it is spread by unprotected sex and causes penile or vaginal discharge and dysuria, and it may also cause vaginal bleeding. The root word gano comes from the word seed and the suffix rhea means flow or discharge. Both chlamydia and gonorrhea can be passed on to a newborn child if the mother is infected and it is the reason why antibiotic eye drops are given to newborns. Both of these diseases, if left untreated, can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease or PID. Pelvic inflammatory disease occurs when the bacteria travels through the female reproductive tract and causes serious infections of the reproductive organs. It can lead to serious systemic infection and even infertility. Symptoms of PID include abdominal pain, fever, dysuria, dyspareunia, remember that was painful intercourse, and vaginal bleeding. And like I said, that's a very serious disease. Syphilis is caused by a spirochete or a spiral-shaped bacterium, if you remember your microbiology, and it is an STD that can spread through the bloodstream to affect every organ in the body. It can also be transmitted among IV drug users who share needles. Note the spelling here. I always spell this wrong, so I'm going to point it out. Syphilis is spelled with one L, not two. Syphilis has three stages. Primary syphilis presents with an ulcer called a chancre, another tricky one to spell that's pronounced chancre, at the place of infection. And if primary syphilis is not treated, it will progress to secondary syphilis. Secondary syphilis will appear as a rash on the hands and soles of the feet along with swollen glands, and arthralgia and myalgia, which just means joint pain and muscle pain. Then syphilis can lie dormant for many years or even decades and reoccur as tertiary syphilis and cause permanent brain damage and dementia. Primary syphilis is easily treated with penicillin or other antibiotics, so tertiary syphilis is rarely seen nowadays. Syphilis can be transmitted from an infected mother to a fetus before birth. Chancroid is an ulcerative disease that is not caused by a spirochete and does not cause system-wide effects like syphilis. It is an infectious, painful, ulcerative STD, but not related to syphilis. It causes swollen, tender lymph nodes in the groin. Trichomoniasis is usually just called trick. It's caused by a parasite, not to be confused with trichinosis, which causes food poisoning and undercooked pork. Usually men are carriers of this disease and they almost always never have symptoms. This STD is associated with a frothy yellow-green discharge with irritation and itching in the vulva. So if you ever see a question on a test or a homework that uses the terminology frothy green discharge or frothy yellow-green discharge, the answer is almost always trick, trichomoniasis. In this type of infection, both partners need to be treated Otherwise, you end up with what they call a ping pong infection, where the partners keep reinfecting each other. Molluscum contagiosum is a sexually transmitted disease caused by a virus. The result is small shiny bumps that contain milky white fluid inside. They can disappear and reappear anywhere on the body. You may actually see these on children, in which case they are not considered sexually transmitted. Herpes simplex type two or HSV type two is the virus that causes genital herpes. This virus causes painful, watery blisters on the skin and mucous membranes in the genital area, along with fever, joint pain, and tender enlarged lymph nodes. There's no cure for this virus, and the patient will suffer outbreaks of these sores throughout their life. The initial outbreak is usually the worst, and then the virus remains dormant in the nerves. We talked about cold sores in the integumentary system, which are caused by the related virus herpes simplex type 1 or HSV type 1. Human papillomavirus or HPV causes genital warts and can occur in both men and women. In women, this virus can cause changes to the cells in the cervix and can increase a woman's risk for cervical cancer. Human immunodeficiency virus or HIV is a virus that attacks the immune system and usually leads to acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or AIDS. Because HIV is carried in body fluids, it can be transmitted during unprotected sex 
by sharing needles or from pregnant women to their unborn child. The test used to detect the antibodies to the virus in the blood is the ELISA test, which is confirmed with something called the Western blot test. HIV damages the immune system, which allows infections to develop in the body that the person would normally be able to fight off rather easily. These are called opportunistic infections and can include herpes simplex, candidiasis, syphilis, and tuberculosis. So here's some tricky terminology. Choose the correct spelling for the medical term. In the first one, it should be the second choice, Shanker, C-H-A-N-C-R-E. Next one, gonorrhea should be with one N. Papilloma, one P, two Ls. And the last one, like I said, this is a tricky one, one L. And some abbreviations, CDC, Centers for Disease Control, DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, PID, pelvic inflammatory disease, and STD and STI, sexually transmitted disease, and sexually transmitted infection. Okay, that's it for this mini lesson. In the next section, we will cover some more anatomy and disorders. Thanks for your attention. See you next time.